The galaxy learned not to fuck with human children the day we reduced a dozen Yadaran worlds to molten slag. I stared at the hollow image in my hand, vision blurred with tears of rage and grief. My son Tommy, frozen forever at eight years old, smiled back at me. Ten years ago those Yadaran bastards snatched him away, stole a helpless child to twist our arm over some worthless space rocks. We gave them what they wanted, abandoned our claim, pulled back our ships. They still didn't return Tommy, instead they sent us a video. I watched in horror as their so-called scientists cut into my baby boy. His screams ripped my soul apart as they dissected him like a frog in biology class. He cried out for me, begged me to save him, until his little body couldn't take any more. I demanded the Yadrans hand over my son's body and the butchers responsible. The Galactic Council just shrugged, said the strategic value of the Yadrans mattered more than human lives. They fucking shielded child torturers because the Yadrans have shiny plasma guns and fancy shields. But not for long. The Yadrans had sown the wind and humanity was ready to bring the whirlwind. For every drop of my son's blood spilled, we'd take an ocean of theirs. The galaxy was about to learn the simple truth. Fuck with human children, and you fuck with the most dangerous species in the universe. For Tommy, for every murdered human child, we were going to burn the Yadarans and their enablers to ash. Humanity was rising, a united force of rage and vengeance, and the galaxy was about to feel our wrath. No matter how many worlds we had to glass, how many fleets we had to crush, I would have justice for my son, we all would. The Galactic Council should have protected Tommy. Now I was coming to make them pay. The UNSC retribution streaked through the void, a predator on the hunt. Its sleek black hull absorbed the starlight, rendering it all but invisible against the backdrop of space. The ship's mission, make the Yardarans pay for every drop of human blood they'd spilled, for every innocent child they'd butchered in the name of their twisted science. Captain Douglas gripped the arms of his command chair, his eyes fixed on the view screen. Arcturus Prime loomed before them, a deceptively tranquil blue-green orb. But Douglas knew the truth knew the horrors that lurked beneath that placid surface, the same horrors that had stolen his son, tortured him, killed him. He stood, the eyes of his crew upon him, men and women united by a shared purpose, a shared thirst for vengeance. You all know our official orders, he began, his voice hard as steel, recon only, observe and report. His lips curled into a humorless smile, but I think we can all agree that's bullshit. A few nods, a murmur of assent. Douglas pressed on. The truth is we're not here to watch. We're here to make them pay, to burn their cities, to glass their planet, to send a message to the galaxy that humanity will no longer tolerate the slaughter of our children. The murmurs grew louder, a rising tide of anger. But not everyone looked convinced. Douglas saw the hesitation in some eyes, the uncertainty. He couldn't blame them. What he was proposing went against every regulation in the book, but those regulations hadn't saved Tommy, hadn't saved countless other human children stolen by the Yadarans for their sick experiments. I know some of you have doubts, he said, softening his tone, and I understand what we're about to do, it's not easy, but think of the children, not just my son, but all the others, torn from their families, tortured, murdered, while the Galactic Council stood by and did nothing. His voice cracked, raw emotion bleeding through. We have to send a message, have to show them that humanity will no longer be victims, that we will fight for our children, no matter the cost. The atmosphere in the bridge shifted, as if a current of electricity had passed through the crew. He saw it in their eyes, the determination, the righteous fury. They were with him. Prepare for orbital bombardment! Douglas ordered, retaking his seat. And run full scans of the planet and surrounding space. Something doesn't feel right. The bridge erupted into activity as the crew rushed to carry out his commands. Why was Arcturus Prime so undefended? Where was the Yadaran fleet? The questions gnawed at him even as anticipation built in his gut. Soon he would have his revenge. Soon the Yadarans would learn the price of spilling human blood. But first, he had to make sure they weren't flying into a trap. 
had to ensure that the UNSC retribution would be the instrument of humanity's vengeance, not another casualty of Yadaran cruelty. A chill ran down Douglas's spine as the scan results flashed across the view screen. What the hell, he muttered, leaning forward in his chair. The readout showed a sprawling network of underground chambers, each one packed with thousands upon thousands of pulsating Yadaran eggs. The entire planet had been transformed into a colossal breeding facility. That explains the lack of defences, Commander Ivanova said, her face grim. They think the Council's protection makes them untouchable. Douglas nodded, his mind racing. This was an opportunity, a chance to strike a devastating blow against the Yadarans, but not everyone agreed. Sir, if we destroy those eggs, Lieutenant Chen's voice was hesitant. Won't that make us no better than them? The bridge erupted into a cacophony of arguments. Some sided with Chen, insisting that they had to be better than the enemy. Others, their voices sharp with fury, demanded retribution at any cost. Douglas slammed his fist on the armrest, silencing the debate. Those eggs will hatch into more monsters like the ones who tortured my son, who've tortured countless human children. We have a chance to stop that, to make sure no more families suffer like mine has. He met Chen's eyes, his gaze unflinching. We're not doing this for revenge, we're doing it to protect our people, our children. Before anyone could respond, a proximity alert blared through the bridge. Sir, Yadaran's ship emerging from the planet's shadow, Ensign Liu called out. The view screen flickered and a chittering voice filled the air. Captain Douglas, I've been expecting you. Douglas's blood ran cold, he knew that voice had heard it in his nightmares mingled with Tommy's screams. Serious, he growled. The Yadaran scientist's insectoid face leered at him from the screen. You humans are so predictable, so emotional. Sirius clacked his mandibles in a grotesque approximation of a laugh. Your son provided valuable data, you know. His suffering advanced our understanding of your species' physiology immensely. Red tinged the edges of Douglas's vision, his fingernails dug into his palms, drawing blood. You fucking monster! Monster? No, Captain, I am a scientist, and your species' weakness has been most enlightening. Sirius's compound eyes glittered with malice. You could have struck at us long ago, but you lacked the courage, the resolve, and now it is too late. Douglas surged to his feet, his rage a living, breathing thing. Shut off that transmission, he snarled. The screen went dark, but Sirius's mocking laughter still echoed in his ears. He turned to his crew, his expression carved from granite. Prepare for orbital bombardment, we end this now. No one argued, no one hesitated. They moved as one, united in their determination to bring justice to the monsters who had stolen their children and shattered their lives. The UNSC Retribution's weapons powered up with an ominous hum, targeting the breeding facility below. Douglas's finger hovered over the firing button, his whole body trembling with barely contained rage. For Tommy, for every child the Yadarans had tortured and killed, for every family shattered by their cruelty, he would turn their planet to glass and ash, would burn every last one of their abominations from the stars. His finger descended, and the view screen erupted into searing light as the first salvo struck home. Douglas's finger descended, and the view screen erupted into searing light as the first salvo struck home. Nuclear fire consumed the Yadaran breeding facility, the planet's surface buckling and cracking under the onslaught. Billions of eggs boiled away in an instant. The Yadaran's twisted plans turned to ash. But there was no time to savour the victory, Sirius's ship opened fire, lancing beams of plasma slamming into the Retribution's shields. The bridge shook, sparks cascading from overloaded consoles. Return fire, Douglas roared. Cripple that bastard's ship! The Retribution's cannons thundered in response, a relentless barrage that tore through the Yadaran vessel's defences like tissue paper. Explosions rippled across its hull, atmosphere venting from gaping wounds, Douglas turned to the Marine commander, his eyes hard. Prepare a boarding party. I want Sirius alive. The commander nodded grimly. With pleasure, sir. 
Minutes later, Douglas led the Marines through the smoking ruins of the Yadaran ship, the acrid stench of burned insectoid flesh thick in the air. Plasma fire zipped past their heads as the remaining crew fought with the desperate ferocity of the doomed. But the humans were relentless, driven by a righteous fury that no force could withstand. They cut through the Yadarans like a plasma torch through steel, leaving a trail of shattered carapaces in their wake. At last they reached the bridge. The doors hissed open, revealing Sirius hunched over the controls, his once pristine exoskeleton cracked and oozing. The Yadaran scientist looked up, compound eyes glittering with hate. You're too late, human, he chittered, mandibles clicking. My ship is set to self-destruct. In minutes, we'll all be nothing more than cosmic dust. Douglas leveled his rifle at Sirius's head, fighting the urge to pull the trigger. You're coming with us, you son of a bitch. You're going to answer for what you've done. Sirius laughed, a wet gurgling sound. Green blood bubbled from his mouthparts. You think this ends here? With me? You've only ensured your species' destruction. The Yadarans will never stop until every last human is wiped from the stars. The countdown to self-destruct blared, the seconds ticking away. Douglas grabbed Sirius, ignoring the alien's pained screech as he hauled him toward the waiting dropship. They barely made it out before the Yadaran ship exploded, the shockwave rattling the retribution down to its bones. On the bridge, the crew watched in silence as the last remnants of the breeding facility burned away, the planet's surface a hellscape of molten rock and ash. It was a victory, but the taste was bitter, because Douglas knew that Sirius was right. This was only the beginning. The Yadarans would come for them now with all the fury of a species scorned, and humanity would have to be ready. The retribution turned, setting a course for Earth, for home. But even as the stars streaked past, Douglas couldn't shake the feeling that they were heading not toward triumph, but toward a reckoning, a war that would shake the very foundations of the galaxy. And he would be there to meet it head on, for Tommy, for humanity, no matter the cost. The retribution streaked through hyperspace, racing back to Earth with its precious cargo. Sirius, the Yadaran scientist responsible for Tommy's death and countless other atrocities, sat shackled in the brig, his compound eyes gleaming with malevolent defiance. Douglas paced the corridor outside, his mind churning with the weight of what was to come. As the ship docked at the orbital station, a swarm of reporters and UN officials descended upon them. Cameras flashed and questions flew as Douglas escorted Sirius down the ramp, the Yadaran's chitinous exoskeleton clanking against his restraints. They pushed through the throng focused on the task at hand. The trial was swift and merciless. Broadcast across the galaxy, it laid bare the horrifying truth of the Yadaran's crimes. Survivors testified to the unspeakable experiments inflicted upon human children, their voices cracking with grief and rage. Douglas himself took the stand, recounting the gut-wrenching details of Tommy's final moments. Through it all, Sirius remained unrepentant. He chittered and clicked, his mandibles twisting into a grotesque approximation of a smile. You think this matters? he hissed, as Douglas glared at him from across the courtroom. Even now our fleets gather. We will scour your pitiful species from the stars and your suffering will be legendary. The Galactic Council, seated in the Observer's Gallery, shifted uncomfortably. As the evidence mounted and public outrage grew, they realized their complicity could no longer be ignored. The counselor, a spindly grey alien, approached Douglas during a recess, its large black eyes filled with trepidation. Admiral Douglas, it said, its voice a reedy whisper, perhaps we can come to an arrangement. The council is prepared to surrender Sirius to human custody to face your justice. In exchange, we ask that humanity stand down, that you forego any further retaliatory actions. Douglas's jaw clenched, his eyes hardening. You protected them, he growled. You let them torture and murder our children. And now you want us to what? Forgive and forget? He stepped closer, looming over the cowering counsellor. Humanity will no longer bow to your demands. We will no longer be the victims. 
If the Yadarans come for us, we will meet them head on, and we will make them pay for every life they've stolen. That is the only arrangement we will accept. The counselor backed away, its spindly fingers twitching. Then you doom us all, it whispered before scuttling away. The trial concluded with serious sentence to life imprisonment within the cold vacuum of space, forever denied the warmth of any star or the company of any living being. A fitting punishment for one so devoid of empathy or remorse. But even as the verdict was read, alarms began to blare. News feeds flooded with panicked reports of Yadaran ships, an endless swarm pouring into human space. The invasion had begun. Douglas, his promotion to Admiral freshly minted, stood on the bridge of his ship staring out at the stars. Earth hung below, a fragile blue marble against the infinite black, its fate resting on the outcome of the coming battle. He clutched a small, worn photograph in his hand. In a moment of quiet before the storm, he beamed down to a familiar hillside, the grass waving gently in the breeze. Tommy's headstone stood before him, a silent sentinel. Douglas knelt, placing the photo of Sirius's trial against the cool marble. "'We got him, son,' he whispered, his voice thick with emotion. "'But it's not over. They're coming, and I have to go now. I have to fight, to make sure no other little boys suffer as you did. I just... I hope you can forgive me for not being there when you needed me most.' He pressed his forehead to the stone, tears slipping down his cheeks. I miss you, Tommy, every day, and I promise I'll make them pay for what they did to you, even if it costs me everything. With a final gentle touch, Douglas stood and beamed back to his ship. He strode onto the bridge, his eyes hard and determined. The crew snapped to attention, ready to follow their admiral into the jaws of hell itself. Set a course for the front lines, Douglas ordered, his voice ringing with resolve. It's time we show the Yadarans what happens when you mess with humanity. The ship surged forward, the vanguard of Earth's defence, hurtling toward a reckoning that would decide the fate of not just humanity, but the galaxy itself. Douglas gripped the arms of his chair, his son's face etched into his mind's eye. For Tommy, for every child lost, he would fight, he would win, or he would die trying. If you finish this story, please subscribe and like the video, then leave a comment that says I like the story and I will heart every single one of them. It really helps me. Thank you for your time.